Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FTD Virtual Design Show titled Gathered, Rustic Autumn-Inspired Designs by Jacob, featuring FTD Education Consultant Jacob McCall, AIFD. This design show series is a way to keep us all connected, be inspired, and share knowledge and solutions to solve problems. We are excited to welcome Jacob live today from Florida to showcase a fun, inspiring collection of fall designs to kickstart the autumnal season. In this program, Jacob will delight you with his Southern charm and expertise on design and color. Once Jacob is finished with his presentation, we will open up the session for questions. If you have a question, simply type it in the chat box in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to submit your questions during the presentation and we will record this session. So let's get started, everyone. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks, Janet. Thank you. So. Happy autumn, everyone. I'm Jacob McCall, and I'm here today to share my knowledge with you about the autumn-inspired rustic and gathered designs. Um, as you can see, um, everything starts with a pumpkin in the fall, right? That's when you know that autumn has arrived. You see them everywhere. I wanted to show you a beautiful centerpiece made with a fresh pumpkin um, that's been hollowed out. You add a few pieces of foam in it, and you voila. Isn't that cool? So what I've done is I've taken um, the center point out of the pumpkin and I've added a loamy tray at the bottom of it, a few pieces of foam, built it up. In the center of the foam, I've added a few of wooden dowels in the center, just so it adds a little bit of support to the top of the pumpkin on the lid. I then started inserting a few, a few of the um, wild figs to add a natural vine-like growth on it. You'll see that. How beautiful is this, right? Right around the edge of it, just so it looks like it's kind of wild and wispy and almost overgrown, like, a, like an ancient orchard of pumpkins per se. You'll see even um, peppers in it, as well as dried botanicals from Canoe Nielsen Company. You're gonna see some of those quint slices, but look how cool it is. The flowers are tucked in. We have sunflowers that's been um, plucked. Just a fun, fun way of designing with your pumpkins and making a beautiful centerpiece. And how cool is it? Do you guys on your design bench, do you use Lazy Susans? Because I think this is the funnest thing and, it, and it's able to give you accessibility to your design that way you can make sure that everything on it is perfectly designed and that everyone at the table is able to see all of the beautiful flowers. You're gonna see accents of dark purple aubergine in this. Those are preserved hops. Isn't that cool? So hops are really cool, right? We all love beer on occasion. So hops on top of that, just accented in a beautiful line right over the top of it, just to add a little bit of that artistic creative flair. What do you guys think? I wish I could hear you right now. I know you're, you're back there going, ooh, and ah. I think it's cool. I'm gonna set this right over here. And then we're gonna start with a couple of vases from FTD. What fabulous containers are these? FTD offers these, and you can get them for all the holidays or any special occasion. I'm gonna show you how to do that little ribbon treatment as well. Pretty flowers, and then the ribbon treatment. So first off, let's start with the ribbon treatment. I know that we normally end with a ribbon treatment, but I think it's important to go ahead and do that as a collar. So what we did, you tie a nice little knot around the top of the vase, around the neck of the vase. But then, as you can see, you take your scissors, and just as everyone loves to wear ripped jeans, you take the denim and you just rip the same way that you would do any type of denim. And it gives that really cool hipster kind of look to the ribbon. I think it's really pretty. And then you simply just attach and tie around. So today with these two bases, 
we're going to be creating two little hand tie bouquets and what beautiful flowers i think autumn is is probably one of the most beautiful times of the year you always have the most richest colors to work with look how gorgeous these lilies are beautiful asiatic bicolor lilies and this is simple what we're going to do so we create a little gathering, clustering of the, of the flowers. And this is simple for anyone and fast in your shop if you're creating this in front of your customer. Clustering that way. We have some beautiful wax flower. that we're gonna place on the back side of this to add a little bit of flare out to the side. And then we're gonna use some really cool sponge mushrooms in autumn flavors. I don't like to say color per se, let's the call them flavors because I feel like that's a funner way of saying it. And then we're gonna simply just collar around the base of the bouquet in some really pretty Aurelia. Simply tie off the neck with a zip tie. Like so. Get a nice, fresh, clean cut at the base. Fits down perfect. How pretty is that, right? And then the complementary piece to this is another little hand tie bouquet using simple fall moms. In another cluster, really pretty um, miniature garden roses, as our friend Deborah likes to say. Flare out to the side with the liriope. Look how dramatic that is and the movement that it gives your arrangement. We have a few rolled, curled asphodisra leaves. And for this one, we're gonna stick a few of the Aspidistra leaves right out of the top of this. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can, you can do with the Aspidistra. So it also adds that creative flair out of the top. Another zip tie to bind them, a nice clean cut. the top we place the aspidistra and we're going to snip and how we're going to snip i'm going to show you it very closely you have the aspidistra like so you're going to cut the rib of the aspidistra and you're going to pull how cool is that it's like magic right so that's what i'm doing snipping it at the top right at the bottom, and then we're pulling the aspidistra, and then we're placing it right into the design so it adds a really fun, funky flair and treatment to the top of the arrangement. This creates a sheltering effect for the design. How pretty, right? We're gonna place these over to the left. See, I'm so used to doing shows in front of live audiences that I normally hear people like mummer or clap or something, but I'm gonna wait till the end whenever we can ask the questions. I miss doing shows. I hope all of you, when um, things turn around and get better, that all of you understand that you need to come and be a part of a live audience in any of our education shows. We love this and we love to give back 
all of our talent. So it's important. Ooh, how fun, right? Another FTD container. This one, I've simply placed a block of Oasis in and put a little bit of seeded eucalyptus um, over the top of it. I also have a couple of beautiful pears, and yes, they are fresh. I'm not gonna eat one, but they are fresh. Really pretty flowers. Okay. In this one, we're gonna simply cluster a few of the flowers at the bottom of the design, like basing it. Clustering the moms, and how pretty is this? Normally, you wouldn't necessarily use a soft lavender pink in, um, in autumn work, but I really think that the trends have spun around in the past few seasons and have allowed you to add in hot pink and lavender and deep plums and purples. Really, really makes it really pretty. I'm going to pop in a few of these um, preserved yarrow from the Canoe Nielsen Company. And then also, look how pretty these marigolds are. Who doesn't love marigolds? They also keep mosquitoes away. We're in Florida. Pop a few of these guys in at the base. Look at the color just explode on that. Bring this down. Pop and you can see, I'm gonna twirl it around. You can see that I'm adding to the back side of the design, placing these in. Another piece of yarrow. that. And then we have some dried, really beautiful dried materials here that we're going to cluster and add in. You guys see that? Yeah, there we go. Who likes to say spin anymore when you can twirl? How fun, right? Then we have some wax flower and in gorgeous autumn colors. I think it's so beautiful. Add these guys in so it adds a little bit of wispiness to it. And if you notice, I'm just cutting these in big chunks and then placing it in in clusters, but allowing also those pairs to be the center of attention there. Ooh. Hello. A few more yarrow. Around the base, we're gonna make sure that we have all of our greens covered. I mean, all of our foam covered. And we're going to do a fun treatment over the top of this 
with some fresh okra. And okra, it's always good to add elements of natural garden, earth elements into this as well. Look at that. We place the okra in and you're like, okra? That's a funky thing to be putting in, in a design, but how cool is that? They are, okra is such a southern thing and I guess from being from the south, it's natural for me to want to put this in there, but it really adds another texture, a natural element to it and something unexpected. It's always important when you're designing and your customer is expecting the, the unordinary from, from a design. And that's the reason that they want to come back to you. Um, they, they know that they can always get something really original from a floral artist. So that's what we like to show. How fun is that, right? We're gonna take a few of these callas and just lay them over the top of this. This could be great for an event. And with the calla, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the bottom of it, like so, a really funky treatment that you can do. And we're laying these guys in, tucking the little tail in, just so it adds a little bit of the eggplant color to pop all of those rich oranges and yellows and that that lavendery pinky color in there. And look at the movement that this gives within this design. How beautiful, right? Gorgeous. So we have another complimentary piece that goes along with this. I'll be able to show you that. So here's the base. As you can see, I've placed Smithers Oasis in the bottom of this as well. And then it has a top piece that goes right on top of this as an elevated design. So it's two FTD containers placed one on top of the other. This has elements of fresh cotton in it or dried out cotton, as well as free spirit roses. Um, there's beautiful, beautiful moms in here that give beautiful texture. The okra is in this as well. And look at the cascading effect that the seeded eucalyptus gives. I think it's so beautiful. The yarrow in there is a darker color. It's almost like a peachy color, salmon color. Um, but both of these designs go so beautifully together. As you can see, I'm gonna place the other one just right in front of it so you kind of get the full effect. Do you guys see? How pretty, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous design. So the fun thing is, is we're gonna take pictures of all of these designs and we're gonna give you guys the recipes. That way you can recreate them on your own. Place this guy off of the set. And get ready for the next one. So something I wanted to tell you guys about, um, speaking of live events, AIFD is holding their national symposium in Chicago and it's called DNA. It's gonna be next July. I sit on the national board of AIP and I'm personally inviting all of you to come and experience what it is to be a floral artist. Who doesn't love a good feather, right? Oh, feathers and zip ties. They're friends of mine. So we're gonna create another hand tie bouquet that's gonna go in a really funky container. Look how cool this is. I think this is accent decor. Really, really beautiful. 
we have a gathering of funky colors here, really bright, as I said about the hot pink. It's almost like bubblegum pink. Isn't that beautiful? That we're gonna pop into these autumn colors and show you just how, just how gorgeous this can be. And then we have a little surprise at the end that's unexpected for this design, popping in some beautiful red roses. And some red spray roses, miniature garden roses. A few spider moms in bronze. Look at that, clustering them together. Gives color blocking and a more color impact for the eye. Popping in that hot pink bubblegum color. Look at that. How pretty, right? Popping it around there on that side together. And look how gorgeous these little mums are. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the texture of that and the color. Solidago. Come back here. You know, flowers try to jump away from me sometimes, but got to tame them. Here we go. Look how pretty, right? The colors are all there. That red, it's popping on the side. And then we're going to lay a little bit of foliage over to the left hand side just to soften it up. Like so. And then we have aspidistra foliage that we're gonna bring in and roll under. So this effect of rolling the leaves just kind of bases it and collars it. And it actually adds stability for some of those flowers that, that needs help sometimes with their necks and they're a little tired or need a little support. Bring this right in. How pretty is that? Then we're gonna zip tie. Nice strong zip on it, so it's very bound and holds together. We're gonna give it a nice clean cut. You wanna make sure that you always give your flowers a nice clean cut. That way they're able to drink water and you use preservative as well as a finishing spray. Like so. And then a little bit of leaf shine on the aspidistra leaves to give it a finished professional look. We're gonna place this in the container. Oh, who doesn't like a little bird or a creature or something to put in there because that's what everybody loves. We're gonna give him a little bit of stability too. Place a wooden dowel in the base. And there he is sitting atop his beautiful little nest. And then we're gonna take some real pheasant feathers and curl them around him.
Is this not fun? I'm telling you, if you put a bird or a creature or some type of little butterfly, a bug or something, your customers will love it. It also adds a natural element to it because that's what people see out in nature. Look how fun. So we're gonna spin this around. Isn't he beautiful and magnificent? And look at his little sparkles. You know, I always, I'm like, I do love a little sparkle in my shows if y'all have ever seen me live. So there's my glitter. Love it. And how simple, a simple little hand tie bouquet sitting atop a beautiful container and what a way to make a statement. Love it. Okay, we're gonna move you over there, little guy, as he's chirping away. We have one final design for you. How fun is this? So we have a beautiful birch container, face at the bottom with beautiful foliage. And then we have really funky bark that I've placed in here parallel um, to add just different elements and different dimensions to the design itself. This one is going to be very simple, but very impactful for the eye. I'm going to show you, we are so blessed as florists to use beautiful, beautiful product. And look how gorgeous. Okay, it's the size of my head, you guys. Isn't that funky? Look how pretty. I love it. We are really blessed to be able to to work with beautiful things that make people really, really happy. I think that when, every, when anyone receives flowers, they're happy, right? We're basing these guys down at the bottom to bring your eye down like so. A little wispiness of the white status in between. To bring your eye in and out of the design, that's important, or <laughs> important, <laughs> that's important. You know, a lot of people always say, well, what are you thinking of whenever you design? And I always say, well, the flowers are telling me where they want to go. So I always just allow them as I'm placing them in to tell me where they're going to be. And I kind of have an idea, but I truly believe that they're going to go where they're supposed to go. If they don't, that's when your eye starts looking at the design and you go, what is that? And why does that look kind of off? If you naturally allow your, your brain to place those flowers where they're supposed to be, you won't have that offset feeling. We have some other products that are from Canoe Nielsen. And this is our Chico Chokes, which I think are really cool too. We're gonna base those down at the bottom. These are preserved and dried um, artichokes just to give another natural element in the base of this. So this design, I'm actually designing one-sided. How pretty is that, right? Bring your eye down there. And then to really sing up here in the heavens, we have these really beautiful snapdragons that are so pure and so white. 
They're so gorgeous. That pretty. That's how you know that autumn is coming to an end as well, is when the first snowfall happens, right? That's this. How beautiful. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, my little virtual design experience today. And I'm so happy and honored to be a part of the education department with FTD. What a, what a wonderful historic company to be involved in. And um, I'm just honored to be able to share my experience and my education and my artistry with you. So with that, I think we're ready for questions, right, Janet? Jacob, thank you so what? much for inspiring <laughs> us with those rich florals and the rustic textures of the season. I love fall too. Yay. Um, we are open for questions as Jacob as a reminder, if you have a question, just type it in that chat box. We're taking a look at those. Um, there were some questions early on um, if you were using dried flowers or fresh flowers, like in your both. first. Both, okay. So we're um, using both. We're using preserved, we're using fresh flowers as well as dried flowers. And you know, the reason for that is because dried and preserved flowers mixed with fresh flowers are a hot trend right now. Um, a global. You're going to see it everywhere. You're even seeing it in bridal bouquets and um, everything, actually. Okay. I'm placing a little pumpkin, some gourds in here, some white gourds, so gives a little autumn feel as we're getting ready for the question. Great. Um, on the wood brown, the, the brown wood box design that you did, it looked like it was white sunflowers. And they were asking what the flower was. Is it a mum? Is it a straw flower? Um, on this one? On the, yes. Was so it, those are mums. Those are mums, okay. Yep. Yep. Those are really beautiful mums. And they're actually a white lavender pinkish color. Let's see if I can bring it closer so you can see it. Okay. And then there's a question about um, the feather curling. Can you use any feather to type a feather to do that or? You can, and the trick to the feather curling is you wanna use the back side of your knife. Um, if you are using a knife, I, I prefer to use a really sharp bladed knife. Um, Smithers Oasis sells these and they're really great, but you use the back side of the knife and you just simply roll it just like you would ribbon and it creates a nice curl. All right, great. Um, is it, and then somebody did ask about getting the names of the companies where you purchase the products and the vases. So you're gonna provide that to us with the, with the uh, pictures and the recipes and that, right? Sure, and two of those containers are from FTD. Yes. Um, uh, then there was another question. Did you use undyed wood picks for the fruit? And is there something to dip them in to keep them from deteriorating so quickly? So what I actually use, um, these are wood skewers that you would normally use for barbecuing. Um, there are wooden picks um, that you can use, um, cowie picks and that, those sorts of things. But I like whenever I'm using um, fresh fruit or vegetables, I like to use skewers, um, the type that you do barbecue with. Good shish kebab stick. Great. Um, let's see, we've got another question. How did you anchor the birch bark into the container? Did you cover it so it doesn't lick the water and turn soggy? You're talking about this guy, right? Um, is that birch bark? The birch bark in this one? Yes. Okay, so what I did is I based um, Oasis uh, floral foam in the bottom of the container itself. And I simply inserted, the bark is actually very sturdy. I actually inserted it directly into the foam, vertical. Okay. And it's, you can see it's, it's very sturdy in there. Yeah, it does look good. Um, let's see, we've got another question. They've been told that using fruit can cause the flowers to decay, but they look great. So yep. what are your thoughts on that? 
so it depends on if you want to use fruit for a special event or a wedding or something like that, or if you need it to, to be long term more than, you know, three or four days. So if you're going three or four days and, you, and it's for a client that they want it to last a lot, lot longer, there are beautiful um, permanent botanicals that are fruit and vegetables as well that you can place in there. But I like to use fresh. I mean, and it's going to be there for the, you know, for a couple of days. Flowers actually decay, as does anything fresh. Correct, correct. All right, well, it looks like that's all the questions I see. Of course, tons of um, compliments on how beautiful and gorgeous your designs are, starting with the beginning all the way through, Jacob. So um, we just want to thank everyone for attending today's virtual design show. Um, it was recorded, as I mentioned, so that recording will be available on demand on the FTD Mercury Network Florist YouTube channel. Our next virtual FTD Virtual Design Show is scheduled for Wednesday, November 4th, titled Home for the Holidays with Ann, presented by education consultant Ann Jordan AIFD. And that registration is already available at ftdi.com, so sign up now. And thank you again, everyone, and thank you, Jim, for inspiring us. Thank you so much, Janet, and see you guys somewhere soon.